Hey everyone, welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. Uh, so we're going to continue with Eagle, and there it is, perfect. I thought it wasn't starting up. Uh, hopefully we've gotten everything that we need to do in order to get started on this. Um, I think, by and large, we've covered everything like all the introductory stuff that we need to do in order to be able to get started on our first project. Uh, I know that was a fair amount of setup. Uh, I apologize for that. Not exactly the most exciting thing to sit through. Um, if you do already have it set up and it's kind of frustrating to get it set up if you don't. Um, so yeah, you know, I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully though, from this point on, it should be more or less smooth sailing. Um, but that's what we're going to get. That's what we're going to get more done with today. More do the thing. Blow. Bow are you? Um, and uh, we'll 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 get pretty comfortable with it. So uh, on Wednesday, last Wednesday, uh, we, like I said, we spent pretty much the entire time getting Eagle ready to go. Uh, it involved downloading a library and a, and a set of design rules, um, which, you know, was was some extra overhead. But we also set up a um, an empty project. Uh, just went up to File, a New, and Selected Project. And I called it Blinker uh, because we're going to create something that just blinks on a given time um, over time so that that should be a pretty um, a pretty simple starting project and something that is oh there's a paw underneath the uh, uh, monitor I have a cat sleeping behind the monitor um, anyway um, that should be a pretty pretty simple uh, intro project that will get you comfortable and familiarized with how Eagle works now um, it's not necessarily going to make you like a super pro at it, but it will be good to sort of get the basics so that you can work on this stuff yourself if you're ever so inclined. Like if you ever want to create a project um, for school or for your own home use or whatever, um, you should hopefully, ideally, at the end of all of this, have enough familiarity and know-how with Eagle in order to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on Blinker, which is the project that we created. And as you can see, we got a bunch of stuff that comes up. It's closed project and new, rename, copy, delete, edit description, use all, use none, search and folder. Um, rename obviously renames the project. Copy will copy the project and all of its contents um, so that you can, you know, have two copies, one that you modify beyond the design that you're satisfied with, and another one that you just keep the same in case you want to revert back to an earlier version. Uh, delete, pretty self-explanatory, makes it go away. Uh, edit description is uh, the, um, the description that pops up over here. Uh, use all and use none, I believe, refer to uh, using the, the sub uh, entries inside of a project. Uh, and search and folder will bring it up in your computer finder. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to new and then schematic. And as you can see, uh, it just popped up a schematic window. So it's pretty boring looking, pretty blank. There's nothing here. Um, just because we don't have anything placed on it yet. Obviously, it's an empty schematic, so there's nothing here. Uh, it's our job to create the initial schematic so that we can um, mess around with it. Okay, so we got that one. Um, okay. So, first things first. In order to actually create a circuit, we need to have the stuff that's going to be on the circuit, right? Because a schematic is an illustration of how all the different components on a circuit are connected to one another. Uh, we can't draw the connections until we have the components that are to be connected. So, you know, 
you know, we have to we have to list like the LEDs and stuff like that, and the, the diodes and and resistors and ICs and everything else that's part of a circuit. Uh, what do you mean you can't make a schematic? Like, so you right-click on it, you don't have the option to create a new schematic, or you do that and it gives you an error message or nothing happens. Um, well, you shouldn't have to click new. You should just be able to move your mouse over it and uh, have it create a little a little sub menu here. Or is it grayed out? Anything? <laughs> That's usually how it goes, though, right? As long as it gets open, though. Um, okay, so this is the schematic we're looking at. As you can see, there's a there's a little cross down here on the side. Our cursor is also a crosshair. That cross, I believe, represents the. Um, lower left hand part of the schematic, uh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh no, it represents the exact center. Yeah, it re re represents the exact center. Okay, good to know. Um, but, yes, we making connections on a schematic means nothing if we have, if we don't have stuff that we can connect to other stuff. We can say, oh, there's a connection that exists, and that's not helpful information. But if we say, oh, the diode is connected to uh, the resistor here, you know, here, then 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 we're getting somewhere, you know. Then that's more information. Then we can say, oh, then the other side of the resistor is connected to the five 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 circuit or uh, timer, um, and then then you know the five 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 is connected to uh, like two more resistors, the power and the ground, and then it's also connected to the LED. And then you're like, wow, I understand how this is all you know coming together now. It's making a lot more sense. But if we just say like, oh, there are like five connections on the circuit, um, that doesn't mean anything. I guess we get the idea that it's not a very complex circuit, um, but it doesn't it doesn't help us. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to start by adding components to our schematic. Components being things like resistors and LEDs and stuff like that. And the way we do that is we go to the um, there is a there is an icon on the left hand side, and it's it's like a small logic gate that has a plus sign with a downward pointing arrow. It's right next to the trash can. If you mouse over it, like hold your cursor on it, um, a little tooltip that pop pops up that says add. This is the window that we go to in order to add new components. When you click on it, you'll have a new window pop up. Boom, window. Hello. And it's probably going to have a whole bunch of stuff listed in here. Um, these, this is just a, a collection of components that the libraries that we added last Wednesday uh, came with, which means that we can add these now to our circuits. Um, that's the power of the libraries in Eagle, is it gives us the ability to add our own custom collection of components to the program because the program it's not going to come with every single components ever made ever that's just that's completely insane to suggest that's a lot of stuff that's too much stuff uh, they can they can you know include enough stuff to get you by with the base library 
But if you're working on something more specialized that requires more specialized components, it's not really worth their time to, to or is it possible even, to create all of the separate um, components that exist out there in the electronics world. Instead, what they do is they provide a system that allows others to add custom components. Not only that, um, but like, you know, how they operate and uh, what they look like and the amount of power they can take and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition to that, you can you can create a whole bunch of these and collect them together into lists of these custom components. And these lists of custom components are libraries. So that's exactly what that Adafruit library was. Was it, it was a collection of custom components that are used with Arduinos. Um, in the past, we've made a an entire Arduino uh, micro circuit, which has been pretty cool. Um, but we're going to start it out a little bit simpler this time. Uh, I do not actually know 100% how many more classes we have left, so I want to make sure that we are able to finish uh, a project before we have to uh, basically break for the winter break. Nothing shows up in your ad page. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Um... Does, is, does anybody have anything in their ad page? Raise your hand if you do. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got a couple of hands. Uh, raise your hand if you do not. Okay. A couple of hands. All right, so let's see here. What I want you to do is I want you to go back to the control panel. Uh, let me let me just click cancel here and move this window out of the way. So now we're back at the control panel that exists. The control panel is always open. Um, it might not just it might just be not enabled. Um, so we'll see we'll see first if it's downloaded but not enabled, and then we'll see if um, if not, then we can we can get the library downloaded. You also have nothing in your, uh, okay, gotcha. All right, so yeah, also head back to the uh, the control panel. So we're back to the initial window. Um, under libraries, click the little arrow next to it and see if there's anything that's there. Do you have any folders here? There is nothing. Okay. Um, no, 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 in the control panel. Like I've got here on my screen. See how I click the little arrow next to libraries? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I figured you, uh, you were looking in the right place. Um, okay. So, if there's nothing there, first, the first area to look is options and then directories, like we did uh, on Wednesday, and see if you can navigate to the library that exists in the Eagle folder, just like you did with the projects. Uh, and possibly like the design rules and stuff like that. And you're going to have to do it at least twice. You're going to do it once for the base library if there's nothing there. And once for the Adafruit library that we downloaded on Wednesday. So basically it just it's, it involves clicking browse and finding that folder, in this case, it'd be LBR and the Eagle folder, and then just clicking Select Folder. As you can see here, mine is listed with the default um, Eagle one, but, uh, okay, so the, the, the bin file, it's short for binary. Um, go up a level, 
on the binary file, and you should be inside of the Eagle folder. Select the LBR directory, and then like click on it, and then click Select Folder at the bottom of the window. And you should have it listed, like the full file path listed in the libraries. Okay, so uh, right now you're in the, the bin file. Go up a level. So go to the go into the folder that is con that contains this the the binary folder, the bin folder. Which should bring you to the base eagle directory. And it's going to have a whole bunch of folders in there. It's going to look something like this. You're going to have the binary and the uh I guess Uh, I'm not sure if that's camera or cam as in machining, but you're going to have the cam and the documentation and the design libraries and miscellaneous and projects and um, screens and things like that. You're going to have one labeled LBR. I want you to click it once. So as you can see here down in folder, it says LBR. And then click select folder. And it should close out that window. And then you should have the file path. Oh, it's separate. Okay, so it didn't put everything into one folder on your desktop. Everything is a whole bunch of separate folders on your desktop. Oh, that helps explain things a little bit. Okay, I didn't realize that. I thought it was all contained within a folder on your desktop. That explains a lot, though. Okay, well, the, see if you can't find the, the library folder. And um, do that whole selecting thing I was talking about. And then you're going to want to do that for... Yeah, you're going to want to do that for the Adafruit thing as well, Mateo, if you haven't already um, listed it as a library in your, in your library's... Uh, list, I guess. It is in the libraries? Okay. Um, so if it's listed in libraries, uh, Mateo, I want you to right click on it, the, the folder itself, I want you to right click on it, and then I want you to left click on use all. Luck is good. Let's hope luck is on our side. Um, so you don't necessarily put it anywhere. Just do the, are you still in the, that's true. Uh, true, Mateo. Um, so are you in the, um, the browse thing that I was talking about before. Okay, so you're are you inside of the file or are you just looking at the file? Okay, go back up one level so that you're looking at the file. And then I want you to just left click on that file once. So it's selected. And then I want you to left click on the select folder button at the bottom.
Did you do that? Excellent. There's a lot of stuff there now. That means that um, that means that that library got added. Did you do that for the Adafruit library as well? Okay, go ahead and do that as well. Uh, the same process, just you select the Adafruit library folder instead of the default Eagle LBR folder. And then you should have both libraries added to your Eagle, which will um, allow you to have all of the components in the world. Not really, but a lot of them. Um, again, you don't, you don't put it any, uh, oh, you put it into the library, um, entry. So you'll have two entries into the library, um, list. So it's this, it's the exact same process you did for the default library, including clicking on libraries and, uh, then browse and then selecting the add a fruit folder and everything like that. You'll have a, like, you'll see a semicolon and then there will be a second, uh, file path listed there. Because you can have multiple set up. Okay, excellent. If it's already there, then uh, hopefully that should be everything. Uh, it takes six years to read all of the component names. It's entirely possible. There's a lot of them. All right, so we're back at the ad screen. And hopefully we should have a whole bunch of stuff listed there now. Just like uh, 19 inch and 40 double X, 41 double X, 45 double X. If you don't have all these things listed, then that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, uh, Hannah, real quick. You see how you've got that. I want you to make sure it has this. So there's a semicolon in between the Eagle directory slash LBR and then the C colon user slash or slash user slash blah, 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 blah. See the difference between the two? Okay, so I, I sent you I sent you two separate things in the chat box. Um, one of the first one is is actually the first two file paths that are listed in the thing you just copy pasted to me, exactly as it is and how you copy pasted it to me. The second one I made a change. I put a semicolon um, in there uh, right after the LBR at the beginning. Do you see Do you see what I mean by that? Okay, do you see the, the two things I sent you in the chat box? All right. So you see how it starts with eagle directory or eagle dir slash lbr? Look at the first one 
and it says LBR, and then immediately capital C, colon, slash, and then the second one where it says LBR, and then there's a semicolon, and then capital C, colon, slash. You see that? Okay. I want you to do the exact same thing to your library's um, listing in the uh, in the directories uh, box. Uh, we're we're just getting everything set up, like the final setup, Cohen. Uh, if if you've already got components listed in your ad box, don't worry about it. Your ad window, I should say. No, no, no. Uh, just uh, just put a semicolon there, like exactly where I put it on the thing I, I copy pasted to you. No worries, Cohen. And uh, let me know when you've done that. Any uh any luck there, Hannah? Okay, cool. All right, so then hit okay and uh, bring the schematic back up and click on the add window or click on the add button and bring up the ad window again and we should all be looking at the ad window now so the ad window should list all of our components giving us the ability to add whatever we want provided it's in our libraries to our schematic so we got the, the listing of AMD chips, um, microcontrollers, uh, buzzers, uh, German stuff, uh, ECL logic devices. Just a whole bunch of things. In fact, too much stuff to keep track of. Like if we wanted to find something, it's going to be difficult to reliably find it. Thankfully, they implemented a search function in the ad window, and it's actually pretty robust. Uh, it's not bad, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I want to find a 555 timer. So I'm going to just type 5. Five, 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 three times. That's it. I'm going to hit OK. Uh-oh. Nothing came up. Well, that's because the search function is pretty, uh, hmm, uh, think of it like Google, kind of, uh, except not as smart. Um, actually, how many of you have done, have you tried how many of you have tried to search using a Unix system so like in Linux or something like that through the terminal okay we got one hand uh, you might have heard of the wild card then <laughs> exactly <laughs> there you go um, the wild card basically allows you to say uh, 
Yeah, it was. <laughs> you you know you know Cohen. Um, Cohen Cohen knew it, Caleb. Um, as it stands right now, what I just searched for was specifically five five five. What I was telling the computer is the only thing I want as a result is literally just three fives in a row. Nothing before it, nothing after it, nothing in between, or anything of the sort. Just five, 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 period, end of sentence, done. Okay. However, that's not generally how component naming works. We don't just name something five, five, five especially when there could be different types of them. There could be different, uh, you know, manufacturers. There could be different purposes, different timings, different whatever. Generally, you would have to provide more information than that. So I say I want a 555 timer. Okay, what kind? Well, I'm going to explain that in a moment, but um, maybe I'm searching for it here in Eagle, and I want to tell the tell Eagle that I want to find a 555 timer. That's all well and good, except for the fact that Eagle distinguishes between them. They have different, you know, names and serial numbers and stuff like that based on their different purposes. Nothing's going to be labeled just flat out 555. So what we do is we inter insert something called a wildcard character, and a wildcard character can be inserted before or after. And what it basically says is if I insert it before, it's going to find any number of anything before uh, it'll find anything that has 555 at the end. So there could be any number of characters before it. I could put it after. And that means that it's searching for anything that has 555 and then any number of characters after it. I could put it on both sides and it would search for something that just has 555 somewhere in the name. What we're going to do is we're going to put it before it and I'm going to hit OK. So I've got an asterisk and then three fives. And this brings up some results. We've got the BTS 555, the ICM 7555, the MAX 1551, the MAX 1555, uh, 1 uh, the BTS 555, the LSP 10, I don't know why it brings that one up, but it does, and the NE 555. And we got some descriptions here, Infineon Technologies, Profit, Datasheet, BTS 555, Maximum Components, blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do is we're going to use the NE555, which is the General Purpose Bipolar Timer. Timer. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see up here in the preview window, I've got a little schematic picture, and I've also got a little board picture. Um, these are these are what the, they're going to look like on the schematic and on the board, respectively. But we're going to use this general purpose bipolar timer because that's what we want. Something that's very, very general, something that will be easy to find on the internet, you know, if you're looking for components and stuff like that. And I'm going to click Use. Oh, wait, no, cancel. I'm going to double click on that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double click. Uh, also, I can hold down Control and scroll the mouse wheel in order to zoom in and out. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make things easier to see. Whoops. I'm going to try not to screw things up too bad. But here, my cursor still has the crosshair, but now I also have a component following it. In fact, this 555 timer. Move it around wherever, it's going to follow it. I'm going to left click once, bam, and like a stamp, I just stamp it out onto this empty area. Now I still have it. I can click again and stamp more out, but I, I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to hit escape, and it's going to bring me back to the ad screen. So that's how adding components in Eagle works. You select a component by double-clicking on it, and then you can add as many as you want until you're done and you hit escape. I only want you guys to add one. If you added more, that's okay. We can delete them. But uh, as it stands right now, we really only need one. Hmm. What I'm actually going to do is, if you added more than one, you can just click the undo button at the top a couple of times until you just have one left. So now I just have the one. And that is our, um, that is our 555 timer on our circuit. So, so far so good, right? 
We've got a we've got a timer added. Hopefully. Hmm. Well, once we've done that, we're going to add a resistor. Actually, we're going to add several resistors. We're going to add a very specific type of resistors, which is quarter W through hole resistors. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Add Components window. I'm going to type in resistor. Bam. No wild cards, no nothing. And we're going to get a bajillion results. Oh, so many results. This is way too many to go through. We're actually going to uncheck SMDs. Which I don't remember what that stands for. Um, but we're going to uncheck that. We're going to click OK again. And that's going to reduce the number of results. There. Now we have a more reasonable number of resistors. And if we look at all these, we're going to have a whole bunch of different resistors under the Adafruit. Um, under the Adafruit um, uh, listing. Um, in this case, as you can see, they're not actually, interestingly enough, they don't actually have resistor values listed here. There are a whole bunch of different footprints, but they all keep the same symbol, and it's just generally listed as value up here in the, um, in the um, preview window. Now, why do you think that is? In the past, when we've done like the Arduino stuff, and we've used circuits.io, um, it's been necessary to say what kind of um, resistor it is, like how much resistance. However, in this case, uh, we've got a bunch of different footprints for a resistor, but no values. Any ideas? That's true. You can choose a value once you have it. Um, why? What does this do that the one that circuits.io didn't do? And what does circuits.io do that this does not do? What do you think? They, this program and circuits.io, there is some overlap, but they tend to serve different purposes. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so circuits.io, when we were messing around with it, it simulated circuits, right? Like it, it was like, oh, hey, the resistance here is not enough, and so the current is too large and it causes the LED to pop. Uh, otherwise everything works great. Um, 
but it was all a schematic or it wasn't a schematic it was that it was that weird little pictures and stuff like that uh it was meant to look like a circuit as you were looking at it um but it was it was meant to simulate how a circuit works eagle doesn't simulate how a circuit works that's not its point its point is to help you design it and lay it all out on a board it's assuming that you're doing the necessary math and the necessary testing in order to know whether or not the resistors that you have are enough for the circuit to function properly and not too much so even here when it says name and value and all that stuff if we change the value of the resistor that is simply for us to keep track of where things are it's like commenting on code it doesn't actually change the properties of this circuit at all because the entire point of this circuit is to provide a set of basically to, to design a circuit to be placed onto a printed circuit board uh, you can have a bazillion different resistors of different resistances all placed on the same board with the same footprint so it doesn't matter it rather it doesn't care what the resistance is what it cares is how big that resistor is so that we can place it on the board and properly design it with that in mind i'm going to select one very specifically at the top here i've got the adafruit um library and it might have the the rus underscore which is resistor american symbol because we're in america um, and we've got a whole bunch of different resistors listed here. Now, the only difference between any of these resistors is simply the footprint as it exists on the board. Uh, what I did is I typed resistor into search and then unchecked SMDs. And we've got a whole bunch of results here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the R-US underscore 0207 slash 9. And that is basically, it's about a quarter of an inch, roughly. Um, and it is, uh, it's more or less the kind of footprint that we're looking for. The other ones are a little bit wonky, like maybe a little bit too big or too small. Um, this is the one we're interested in, is the 0207-9. Under description, it just says 0207-9. So that might be easier to find it that way. But we want to make sure we use the 0207 slash 9, not dash, slash 9. And I'm going to click oh, twice on it. I'm going to double click on it. And so now, as you can see, I've got the same thing. I've got uh, a resistor symbol, which is following my cursor around. I'm going to place four of them down. At this point, you can uh, you can just use any similarly uh, sized resistor. Um, in fact, you don't have to worry about it a whole lot, really. Um, I, I selected the size of the resistor I did for more of a, um, a thought experiment kind of a thing. But if you find you know, just any sort of resistor that is just a basic resistor, a basic US resistor, you can use that one. It's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge sometimes, maybe possibly, in order to place everything onto the board. But um, in the end, we're not gonna build a circuit out of this. So even if you find one where the resistors are slightly different sized, or a slightly different size, it'll be okay. Basically, TLDR, don't sweat it too much. But place four of them uh, once you have selected one that you're satisfied with. And just sort of, you can just put them over here on the side. Like, it's not a huge deal where you place them yet either, because we can move them around. Um, so, yeah, you can just put them, like, right over here. 
and that'll be good. So, so far, so good. We've got our 555 timer, and we've got four resistors. This is a good start. However, I want to show you guys how to save. <laughs> so we can save this project uh, for next time, uh, which means that we're probably going to stop building a circuit right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out the add window. And I'm going to go up here to File, and then Save. And it's going to ask you to give it a name. We're just going to call it Blinker. Blinker! Bam! Blinker.sch. SCH is short for schematics. Now, um, this might bring up a little bit of context now. You see how it's schematics, and then there's a, an asterisk, and then .sch. Hey, we just talked about what the asterisk is. It's the wild card, right? So that's what the computer is doing here, is it's looking for everything that has a .seh suffix on it. And you'll see this in a lot of places on your computer. Like all files, you might have an asterisk, and then a period, and then another asterisk. Um, and that's just looking for anything that has um, any sort of file extension on it. Yeah, file extension just basically means that that period and the three letters afterwards. That refers to what type of file it is. That's how a computer identifies what type of file it is. So like on Windows.exe is short for executable, and there are always going to be programs that you can run. .txt is going to be a text file, a plain text file, um, which is always something you can open up in like Notepad. .rtf is going to be a rich text file, which is something you can open up in, in a lot of word editors. Uh, .bmp is bitmap. Uh, .png is a portable network graphics format, things like that. Um, when I say file extension, that refers to the three letters after the dot at the end of the file name. So we want to keep our file extension as .sch because we want to make sure that we are saving this as a schematic file. So we're going to go ahead and just hit save once we've named it blinker.sch. And if you look over in the control panel, you should see blinker here. And then we've got this lovely picture of the integrated circuit and four resistors, and bam, cool, we've saved it. Now, this is a good start. Uh, on Wednesday, we're going to add the LED, uh, and I believe there are a couple of diodes, maybe capacitors, uh, probably just diodes, though. Uh, and then we're going to start connecting everything together in order to create our finished schematic. And then next Monday, hopefully, uh, we'll have our circuit completed on the schematic side, and so we can start messing around with it on the board side, because that's actually a decent amount of fun. But, for now, we have completed the class. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the poll questions, and then we'll do question and answer time. And then we'll break for the next couple of days, and we'll meet up again on Wednesday to continue this circuit. Now, granted, we're probably not going to finish the circuit on Wednesday, now that I think about it. It's probably going to be Monday. But, by and large, uh, we should get pretty good progress done on Wednesday, uh, and then we should be in a pretty good position for next Monday. If we get started on the actual board part on Monday, cool. Like I said, that's actually my favorite part of designing circuits, and you'll see what I mean. It's all about placing it on the board and making sure all the connections, like are in their proper sp uh, spot and, you know, aren't crossing and things like that. Um, it's more interesting than it sounds. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you agree. Anyway, um, but that's sort of the next kind of um, blueprint for uh, the, the next couple of classes. At any rate, poll questions, question and answer time, and then break for the next couple of days.